good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells Europe here at Hanover Fair 2023. It's getting really crowded here at the Technical Forum. I invite you all, if you are standing on the orange carpet, please come inside. Uh, there are more seats in the front here. We are also serving complimentary drinks, so uh, don't worry. Um, this is interesting, uh, so you can have a seat. Every 15 minutes, we'll discuss um, the technology behind hydrogen and fuel cell business. I'm also welcoming all of our online guests. We are live streaming from the fair. And just in case you missed the talk, all our talks will be uploaded on our YouTube channel, Hanover Fair, and can be accessed through the website as well. So since we talked about upscaling, we will now dis uh, discuss Simply decisive, sulfur and H2 separators for alkaline water electrolysis. For that, we have the business manager for H2 membranes from Aqua Gevert, Mr. Nick Valks. Warm welcome. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Um, okay. Did I, okay, I did this. Um, so maybe you know all Agfa. I think a lot of you know Agfa from the camera business or the photography business from the past. Um, a very old traditional company from the 1867 when we were founded um, and then uh, merged in the 60s together to Agfa Gebert. Then we became a digital company, more or less, slow by, step by step. Um, we acquired a printing plate business, a digital imaging business, and we went to the stock market in 1999. Um, no more cameras or photos since 2004, when we divested the business. Uh, but the reason why we're all here is because of the hydrogen. Uh, so let's focus on that one. And that's in 2007, when we introduced the zero membranes on the market. So if you look to the full divisions, we have a healthcare business, we have a digital printing and chemicals business, and we have a radiology solution, so still your uh, X-ray imaging. So that's still a bit of the part of the heart of the company, but you see that there is a digital printing and chemical part where we are also focusing on the renewables, of which Zirfon is a part. Key figures from ACFA, um, $1.8 billion company, uh, about 7,000 employees, uh, and still spread quite wide all over the globe, huh? uh, with over representations in over 100 countries. Uh, and we do still spend quite a lot of cash on our R&D, so that's still a big focus in our, in our company. Now, if we look to green hydrogen, huh, because that's why we are here, um, zero membranes, it's just a membrane, but in the end, we are used in quite a lot of the alkaline uh, uh, electrolyzer business. I think we have spread over, all over the globe more than 100 commercial contacts. So people actually buying materials to develop stacks. Um, and I think uh, especially our customers all over here in the place, they know that uh, we are a reliable partner with delivering uh, large size membranes for the full uh, production of alkaline. So where is Sirfon used? We always say Zirfon is used right in the heart of green electrolysis. Uh, so you have the two electrodes, anode, cathode, and then you have uh, Zirfon inside. And basically Zirfon allows a good performance, but doesn't allow any gases to pass over. So it's, a, it's quite a technical presentation I will show you, uh, but at the end it's, it's a crucial part of the green hydrogen production. Now we can be used either atmospheric or pressurized, independent from that. Um, and you see here the anode, the cathode, and a porous separator in between. And so the KOH solution can flow over, 30% um, KOH, 90 degrees. The, the membrane can withstand that without a problem. Um, but the gases you produce cannot cross over. So you will get your good ionic conductivity. Uh, so it's completely different than what you will see with the IM or with a P or with a PEM electrolyzer. It's a porous separator, like it used to be in the past, but one which allows high performance. And that's what you can see here, because some of the data I showed were sliced from uh, also maybe some people have seen last year, but this is completely new. Huh? So this is what you would get with a PPS felt. It's your vacuum bag, which traditionally is used in all type of uh, electrolyzer systems. 
And this is what you will see with the Zirphon UTP 500, our first generation introduced 15 years ago. So at one amp per square centimeter, you get a voltage of 1.8 volt. Our UTP 220, our next generation, you get a voltage of 1.7. And then with the latest one, generation three, it's now in development. It's already scaled up at 1.70 meter. So it's, it's already at full scale, but still in development process and testing with our customers. It's 1.65. One, it's 1 so we are getting in the range of your PEM electrolyzers, but PGM free. This is just with nickel electrodes. No, no PGM materials are used in this case. So you can go up to voltages of 1.7 volt at one amp per square centimeter. The data you see actually are up to two amps per square centimeter. Uh, so there we get a range of 1.89, 1.9 volts more or less at two amps per square centimeter. So that's really into your PEM territory, but PGM free. Again, just rainy nickel electrodes. This is how it's built. So that's the support layer. So there's a PPS woven felt in between, woven structure, which allows durability. So you get strength of the membrane. And then on top we coat a zirconium polysulfone oxide paste, which allows the, the liquid to flow over, but not the gases. And then typically it's, it's being built in in large alkaline stacks. Uh, so that's a, uh, it's not a, a PEM size, but you can really see it's a, it's a big size um, alkaline stacks. And this is how you look at the top view. And that's the, that's the secret. So you have the small pores on the outside, bigger pores on the inside, and again, small pores on the outside. So the liquid flows over, but the gases cannot. Ah, so start of the business 15 years ago. I think, uh, I think we can all say 15 years ago there was no hydrogen business, huh? at least no green hydrogen business. Uh, and then slowly but steadily we saw that there was a strong growth, especially in the last few years. Um, we are a member of some regional clusters, Hydrogen Europe, um, Clean Hydrogen Alliance, and our strategy is to remain the best in class. I think we are considered as a, as a big player on the market, especially on the alkaline electrolyzer market. We are quite uh, um, superior over there also with our performance. Um, and I think we also made a statement uh, about a month ago when we announced our investment. And I want to stress it's an actual investment. It's not just an announcement. We have put out the first POs. It's an empty hole which we will, which we will it's cleared out already in the meantime. It's about 200 meters long, eight floors high, and there we will build our new production line. Um, it's a, it's a go-ahead from our board of directors. It's an investment close to 40 million euros, and it will be ready by mid of 2025. It will be a reconversion of our existing polyester lines. And so we have polyester lines which we used to produce, uh, we, which we used for um, uh, for photographic film. We have cleared out the building, and we will reconvert it into a new site. We currently have a capacity good for five gigawatt per year in our current production line, and we will build an additional 15 gigawatt per year. So in totally, we will be able to supply the market with more than 20 gigawatt, more or less 20 gigawatt per year. I can tell you as of today, we are already shipping out more than two gigawatt per year. So there is already a big green hydrogen market. It's not that it's a, and it also shows that we are quite big on the market as a player. So the timing for that is, mid of 2025, operational, not built. So I have sales offices in Japan, China, and Korea. And of course, I'm uh, doing myself also Europe. I think we are recognized as best in class. We are ready for volume. We are not afraid of volume. We produce more than 100 million square meter of photographic film per year. A few hundred thousand square meter of Zirphon will be fine. We are not afraid of that. Um, and as I showed, we also have a quite a promising R&D pipeline at the moment. So I think we are ready and well positioned to play a relevant role in the hydrogen world. Thank you. Thank you, Nick, for your presentation. I am able to take questions from the audience at this time. So. If there's no question at this time from the audience, I might have a question. Okay. So 
I'm just wondering, so there are many companies now that I'm, they are jumping on the bandwagon of hydrogen business. How, how can we ensure that this is just not another business, but this is really driving the technology forward? So it's not an economical only decision. No. I think uh, that there's a big difference between, I think more or less 10 years ago, there was already a, a hydrogen business or a hype. It was called at that time about hydrogen. I think the, the big difference is that people are now scaling up. You can sense it. Two or three years ago, there were the first megawatt projects for many of the players. They were building a five megawatt stack or something like that. And at the moment, we see people actually building a 100 megawatt, a gigawatt. It's happening at the moment. And on top of that, there's the policies. The governments are there now. Ten years ago, the governments were not with us. And now you can sense that the policymakers are also there. And that's the big driver. There is no more alternative. It's either this or nothing. And, and that's also, I think, a clear sense which is there on the market at the moment. Also from our politicians and the policymakers. And that's I think, is a big difference compared to ten years ago. That is definitely true. And I want to stress that a lot of decisions um, also made here. So we have press conferences here. We have politicians here at this fair. So Basically, if you're participating in this fair, you are driving the hydrogen idea towards a business solution. So thank you so much, Nick. Yeah.